Hey everybody, here in chapter 15 from We Lots Latin Grammar, we're going to look at numerals. We're going to look at the counting numbers and the ordering numbers in Latin. And we'll look at a couple of specialized cases for the genitive and for the ablative. Uh, specifically, that have to do with both numerals and time. So just like we have in English, the most common types of numbers we have in Latin are cardinal numbers, which are counting one, two, three type numbers, and ordinal numbers, so the ones that order things first, second, and third. So in Latin, most cardinal, most counting numbers through 100, are indeclinable adjectives. So there's some good news. Uh, they don't decline necessarily. With a few exceptions, and of course we always start off with the exceptions. Uh, one, two, three, and one thousand are slightly different. So those will decline. So let's take a look at them because it's uh, easier just to look at a chart of them. So two, duo, duo, do I, duo. And you might notice only has plural forms. So it makes sense you can't have a singular of two. So for duo, you have duo, do I, duo, duorum, 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 duobus, 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 duos, duos, duo, and then duobus, duobus, duobus. So a little irregular, but fairly easy to memorize. So just keep in mind, two declines. One, unus a um, looks just like a regular first, second declension adjective. So that fully declines. Unus a um. Uh, duo fully declines in the plural. It's irregular. Three, this goes, three's got to be different, is, looks a lot like a third declension noun and adjective. So again, it's easier to just memorize the forms instead of uh, worrying about it too much. So three, trace, trium, tribus, trace, tribus. If it's neuter, tria, trium, tribus, tria, tribus. So again, you might notice that uh, it only has plural forms. And to be a real oddball, thousand, it has singular and plural forms. In the singular, though, no matter what it is, it's just melee. So whether it's nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative, so really it doesn't decline in the singular. But in the plural, whenever we want to say thousands, it does decline. No, confusing, but yes. It does decline in the neuter. Milia, milium, milibus, milia, milibus. Probably just easiest to memorize these few exceptions and not worry about it too much. So unus, just a regular first, second, duo, then trace, then mele. All exceptions. Everything else up to 100 is indeclinable. And there's a chart in the back of the book. You might want to uh, take a look at that. Cardinals. 200 through 900 are declined just like plural for second declension adjectives. So fairly easy. You get things like ducenti, which means 200. Ducenti, ducenti, ducenta. So it declines just like a regular for a second. Remember, melee's got to be the oddball. So thousand. Uh, it's an indeclinable adjective in the singular. So it's melee for all the forms. But in the plural, it's like a neuter I stem third declension adjective. Melia, milium, milibus, milia, milibus. Cardinals, those counting numbers, 1 through 25. So unus through begin to quinque. You should probably memorize those because just like when you're in first grade, if you can get through about 20, then it gets pretty regular. So look at that chart in the back of your book and start working on committing those to memory. That way you don't have to look them up every time you see them. Ordinal numbers, so those indicate order or sequence, first, second, and third, things like that, are regular first, second declension adjectives. So the good news is once you learn them, it's real, those aren't really not that difficult. So here are some special uses from this chapter. So again, look in the back and look at the ordinals, and primus secundus, tertius, and things like that. Here's some special uses for some of these cases. Genitive. We have this thing called genitive of the whole. And it's, it indicates 
that the word is a, a whole of some other thing. Like here an example, pars orbis, part of the city. So genitive of the whole, the whole thing is the city. And we're just saying pars orbis, part of the city. So in that case, you could really translate without having to know it was a genitive of the whole. But some words like, or some phrases like satis eloquentiae. Uh, it would sound weird in English to say enough of eloquence. So you would almost just say enough eloquence. So again, it's a genitive of the whole. Ablatives, cardinal numbers. So with cardinal numbers except for melia, the idea of the whole is expressed with x or day plus the ablative. So it looks weird, but you get kind of used to it. Trace x aes amicis meis. That's all that put together just means three of my friends. So literally, it's three out of my friends. And in Latin, this really in the midst of the like three of my friends. Quinque ex eis, so five of them, literally five out of them. Cantum ex queris, 100 of the men. So, looks strange, but you get the hang of it. So, we translate it as if it's uh, a genitive almost, but it's actually uh, an ablative that tells us a little bit of something about the group. More specialized uses of ablatives. You'll, you'll soon find out ablatives are used for quite a few things. Uh, we use them in this chapter to tell when something happened, time, when, or within which. In this case, we don't have a preposition. Uh, we just have to recognize that's what it is and translate it accordingly. Uh, we can translate it in, when we translate it from Latin to English using some prepositions uh, at, on, in, within. And pretty quickly you'll get used to seeing these. Uh, like this first example, you see this quite a bit, Ao Tempore. And it just means at that time. So it's so common, it's almost like we say in English when we start a fairy tale once upon a time. So they say Ao Tempore quite a bit when telling stories. So at that time. This next phrase, Bonis Anis, uh, depending on circumstance we could translate that as in good years. So, when did something happen? Uh, Aodam da, on the same day. So, again, specialized use of the ablative. So, we can almost always tell by context uh, how we should translate these things. So, but remember, none of those have a separate preposition. We have to supply it. So, some vocabulary. Italia, Italiae, means uh, the peninsula of Italy. Italy's not really a unified company until unified country until you know, sometime around the 1800s. But they did consider the continent Italy. Memoria, memoriae, memory or recollection. Tempestas, tempestatis. So that can mean a period of time or a season. That can also mean a storm. So like a tempest at sea. So. Look in the back and look at these cardinal and ordinals. And again, I would probably do through 25 because if you get those, you can see the pattern. Cantum, one we didn't talk too much about. An indeclinable adjective that means a hundred. And you'll recognize this as cantum we see quite a bit. Cent, uh, centigrade, centimeter, centipede. You know, how many legs does centipede have? It has ten. Uh, Mele. Uh, Thousand. It's the one that doesn't decline in the singular but does in the plural. So, millennium. How many years are in a millennium? A thousand. Uh, how many legs does a millipede have? A thousand. So, keep in mind, melee does not mean a million. It means a thousand. Kind of confusing, but you'll get used to it. Some adjectives. Miser. Miser. Uh, miserum. Like it sounds. Wretched. Miserable. Unfortunate. Preposition that takes the accusative case, inter, means between or among. Uh, you'll see this quite a bit. You'll probably see a couple of examples in the sentence of inter plus the accusative. And here's one of those little words, they love these things in Latin, little adverbs, itaque, means and so and therefore. So they use them when they tell stories. So here's some verbs committo, committere, commissi, commissum to entrust or to commit. 
expecto, expectare, expectawi, expectatum. So it means to look for, to look upon, to expect, or to await something to happen. And here's one of my favorite Latin verbs, yakio, yakio, yakare, yaki, yaktum. So that I eventually turns into a J, and that's where we get all those J words like javelin and things like that. Uh, it means to throw or to hurl. So when I was memorizing stuff for Latin, that's one of the things I always remembered was uh, this yakio means to hurl or to throw things. Last but not least, to mayo. To mayo, to marry, to move. To fear, to be afraid, or to be afraid of something. So, of course, we get timid and things like that. So, let's look through these sentences for this book. Sententiae and sequai. And, and keep in mind that homework that I have, I need to update, because probably since I've reformatted the book, the page numbers don't match up anymore. But, uh, sententiae and sequai, they're fairly well uh, marked out in the book. So let's go through these just mainly for the pronunciation. Dio in ista nawe fui et propter tempestatem nubesque semper mortem expectabat. Uh, that's a good one. Septim horis ad eam orbem venimus. Number three. Italia ilis temporibus erat plena graecarum artium et multi romani ipsi has partes colibat. The next sentence, interbellum et pacem debitabant. So that's a good one from Tacitus. And here's Cicero with that little opening I told you to look for. Eo tempore, eastum ex orbe yekibam. So here's that one, like I said, it's one of my favorite verbs, yekibam. Another Cicero, yekibat quisque miser, kiwis romanus sum. In the next sentence, mea puella passerem suum amabat et passer ad eam solum semper pipiabat nexe extremio muiabat. So, well, pipiabat, it's a nice little verb, it's one of those onomatopoeias that makes the sound of something. I'll give you a hint. Uh, sparrows, pipiabat, so they pip and, and chirp. A few more to go. Fili e mei fratrem meum. Delegabant, me witabant, me patrum et carabum et telebant, et meam mortam expectabant. So that one kind of rolls off the tongue there. Nunc autem mores meos mutawi, et duos filios ad me cross traham. Couple more. Dionysius Tyrannus quonium consori caput commentere timibat, ilias suas barbam. At Capillum Tondere Docuit. That was a nice one because it tells a little, little story about uh, Dionysius the tyrant. So that's the, little, the first part of that sentence. So after Capillum Tondere Docuit, it goes on to say, Itaque Virginis Tondebant Barbon at Capillum Patris. Again, it tells a little story. It's a story about somebody getting a haircut or not trusting very many people to give him a haircut. So, spend some time on that, and that's actually a really good sentence. So, that brings us to the end of chapter 15. So, next time, chapter 16, and we're getting to about the halfway point here in Latin 2. So, until I see you again, voilà.